G'day subscribers, happy Easter of 2020. You're with Jules Knight and today we're going to talk about wiring. So welcome to Jive Talking Garage. So with your 48 and your FJ, the wiring harness that you got was made by Disco, which was just down the road from General Motors in Fisherman's Bend. And according to one of our subscribers, which is uh, Graham, he, he's reported 1950 in one of the accelerators that Disco has been bought by General Motors. So they've just acquired the company. So when you look at it, this is a cloth wiring harness and it's been shellacked or varnished just to give it a bit of stiffening on this type of fabric covered wire. So it's it would have been a natural finish. For instance, that one's red, that one's green as far as the traces are concerned. So that's one of the three types that you could get now the second type that you could get is the one i've got in my fj which is um the wiring harness has been repaired at the local shell service station because the people don't take the car to the holden dealership or they've got a good relationship with the service station and it's just local so that's what's in mind so it's got to come out but having said that, you had the fabric wiring harness, the cotton loom. That's what you had. But FJ Holden's, in the end of their run, were replaced by the FE, which had a 12-volt system and also a plastic wiring loom. Now, the, the last FJs to the Ute until December of 1956 and the panel van until, uh, let's see, uh, March of 1957, were manufactured on the same production line. Now we know that by looking at uh, some of the photos that are available in you know publications like in Don Loeffler's book, for instance, on the FJ Holden. So those cars had a plastic wiring harness because let's face it, plastic was being made for the FE. Well, Disco aren't going to provide, oh, well, here's your plastic wiring harnesses. For, sorry, yeah, here's your plastic wiring harnesses for the FE and for the last of the FJ, where here's the old cotton wiring. They're not going to do that. For economies of scale, they're just going to make everything out of um, PVC plastic. So, so as you can see here, you can see this is like, for instance, natural with a red tracer. So this is what I'm going to repair and put into my FJ. Now, this one, from when I bought it, the people who removed it had cut branches of wires off it and stuff like that. So I'm going to use my, this sample, and also a, a full-scale uh, layout uh, that the Brains Trust have got. And, for instance, you know, say, for instance, with this wire, depending upon either what connection I need so I'll get I'll remove the yellow or the blue to make it look how it was original or I'll take you know the original fittings off that for it so I'm recreating the wiring harness so what I'll do is say for instance I'll figure out okay what what this natural wire was and so say for instance if it's exposed here I don't know 12 centimeters well i might go from this point i might go 15 centimeters back so i'll open this all up and i'll use you know zippy ties to keep things together i'll go back 15 centimeters and chop that wire and then get the appropriate thickness wire the gauge so the same gauge type wire and then i'll chop 15 centimeters of that and I'll join the new wire to the old wire there and then the old wire to the new wire there. So I'm transplanting wire in there to give me the original wire exposed. And then I'll put the appropriate ending on it. So as far as the restoration is concerned, I'm restoring this wiring harness because it's not perfect. But by the time you finish with it, it will be. And then it's a matter of checking it and doing all of your things. Now, what I've also done is I've, so I've got a light switch here, got a light switch there, 
and they're all so-so. The one in my car, it works. But the thing is, I want to get rid of all that. I've got one that looks quite decent. So this is the one I'm going to go with. You know, it's in, you know, this tells you it's in pretty good condition. You know, look, you look at the, the, um, the ivory and it looks, looks really good. So what I'm going to do is I will also, after I've installed this, I will be utilizing the power that comes off the back of the switch. So that could be, for instance, my dash fan, my reverse light and my demister because I don't necessarily want to go and take power from the uh, take power from the ignition switch because then things will only operate when the the switch is the keys in and it's turned on and I don't want that I want things to be able to go all the time um, for instance you know even if the the car's not going so that's where I'm going to take power from but that's that's in a pretty good in pretty good condition now Having said that, whenever you're taking um, an accessory to power, you need an inline fuse. So it's a matter of chop that. There's your inline fuse. They're inline fuses, you know, all different types. You've got that type. You've got others. You, you can you can even get, you know, waterproof ones. That's one type of waterproof one for a cylindrical fuse, and that's the new type that you can get for your um, new types of fuses so you know there's if you just open it see you can see there's a new fuse there so um you know i'm a great believer of putting an inline fuse on every appliance just in case so that sort of gets me that gets me started i'll um i'll have the correct color uh you know tape it's not red it's not <laughs> any of these but i've bought enough just so i can you know tie up the branches underneath um and of a lot of instances you know the the regulator box will give you the right color for all of the electrical things that are in the car so regulator box the body of the generator the starter motor and the cup of the distributor will be the the, the bosch brown uh, and I've also told subscribers a couple of episodes ago about the um, part in the book that talks about polarizing um, the uh, current by using a tickler. Well, this is a this is actually a tickler. It's a tickler wire, so it's a matter of touching the the B and D terminals. So it's the two outer terminals. Just touching them whenever you've done work to the regulator or the generator or electrical work, and what you're doing is you're just telling. You're telling power which way it needs to flow. <laughs> I would not have known that if I didn't look in the book. But look, that's um, that's what you've got to do as far as the wiring harness is concerned. Um, one of the other things that is is quite clever is a little scotch lock. Now, with a scotch lock, it's a matter of you know, you're running the wires parallel, the new wire and the old wire, and then clipping them together so they make contact with this little apparatus, and then moving that over so that it's then insulated and protected. So that's, for instance, if you didn't have a soldering on and you wanted to put in a boot light or something like that, uh, and, and or, or for instance, uh, tar lamps um, that's how you could do that by using scotch locks uh, if you didn't have the uh, appropriate solder but yeah it's not a bad thing to have in your in your toolbox um, and don't forget when you're getting your equipment ready you know the rvb relays they come in 6 and 12 volts you can get them uh, they've got the appropriate fuse there so that's a good thing to check out now two other bits um, firstly, this is just a handy hint. When I'm doing soldering, you know, you don't need to be all fingers and thumbs. When you're joining this wire and that wire together, you can actually get them ready and use the alligator clips to hold things in place. And then this will hold them in place for you. And then you can just solder. This makes it easy.
so from that perspective that's really really good now um the other bit that i liked is i've seen some friends cars and they've gone halogen lights now i don't know how this is going to go but um sort of i picked that up now i don't know if it'll fit but i'm going to try but that's the bulb so it's saying six volt 6055 um do not touch glass with bare hands fit by holding base so um yeah look what, what i've specifically been looking for is the the bulb that just goes straight in and takes the place of the old original bulb gives you better lighting um and that's the type of thing that i think is a great idea now I continue to tell subscribers about the worth of the shop manual. Now, in the shop manual itself, on page 236, is the wiring diagram. So this will tell you what all of these wires are for and where they go. And so it'll be, for instance, you know, this one, natural with black tracer um this one natural with red tracer is brown and green and red and you name it it's all there but this is what you need to decode all of that and it is the secret it is the secret to all of it so you know use the wiring diagram now i would suggest put on a photocopier and blow it up to a3 so that you don't have to squint at it to read it. Um, the other thing that you'll need on your wiring harnesses is, is this type of shroud, or it's a bit like the modern day shrink wrap. So this is a protection of wires, whereas shrink wrap does that after you've heated it up, you, you know, put it over it as a sleeve and then just run heat underneath of it and just sucks down onto the wire and you know bob's your uncle um what you can also think about doing is a nice big battery cable really big battery cable and you don't have to go for the skinny braided negative earth strap you know you can, well, what i've done is you know i got me a piece of 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 this um it's it's a bigger braided strap and i got myself a you know one of these battery clamps they weren't cheap however you know you can actually see it's got a side profile in there and that fits in there it can be clamped down with a vise and then i can also solder it together and squash it down and then you know punch through here and you know that gives me a nice big earth and then clean up the earth that goes through my bell housing through to my chassis. So, you know, you couple that with a, a Caterpillar 660 CCA battery, and it definitely pulls the skin off a custard. Um, and then go out and get yourself a, um, a four brush starter motor for your FJ. And, you know, there's no stopping it then. It just, you hit the button and it goes. But anyway, look, that's um, the, the hit that we've got for today as far as the, the refurbishing of the wiring diagram, uh, the, the uh, tickler for the regulator box, a little bit on the battery cables. The battery cable was 50 bucks, by the way. So that just, you know, just not, 50 bucks isn't bad to give you the chances of, of having better starting. Um, we've also talked about the uh, big braided earth cable and also the other bits and pieces that you need when you're putting your your um, wiring back together. You can do it the easy way by just ringing up companies out there that just do it and supply. But um, I think it's more interesting to actually um, refurbish an original one, which is already heavy duty and it just needs a little bit of help because people have been lazy and you just want to bring it back to life. So that's part of the recycling, I suppose, and the restoration. But... Um, don't forget to uh, have a look at our Facebook page at NASCO Bay Jive Talking Garage. Don't forget we also have our um, 
show coming up next Saturday, the 10th of April at Victoria Point Shopping Centre at 4pm. It's only three hours. We're, um, we've been well supported, so a um, few things happening there. And uh, love you to um, subscribe to our YouTube channel and also um, do a little bit of sharing there. But more importantly, enjoy your Holden.